Welcome back to Up and Smoke Firewood. My name's Steve, and in the last video, we made some improvements to my boiler here. I put a steel grate on the bottom that holds the coal bed up off of my uh, rocker grates. That's what cleans the ash out from underneath it. My C500 by Heatmaster is designed to burn coal, and the fans blow through what is the coal bed when you're burning wood, and it's not ideal. So we put this metal grate in there with some holes in it that holds your coal bed up off the rocker grates and allows the fans to more freely blow through the coal bed uh, and fuel the fire. We also put a snorkel on the back of it that comes up and allows some air to feed the top of the fire, giving you that secondary burn that burns the gases, the wood particulate, much the same as uh, like a gasifier. In addition to the new grate in the bottom, I replaced the fans in the back of my boiler with some higher CFM fans that obviously gives more air to the fire and I increased the temp on my boiler. I was at 170 dropping down to like 150 before it kicked back on. I put it on the top end at 185 and put a 15 degree offset so my boiler burns hotter. So I lit the boiler and we've been burning with it for a little while this way. I should say I lit it in the last video you guys saw that. It wasn't burning very well. Taking a really long time to get up to temp. Uh, there was a lot of really dark black smoke coming out of it. Thing looked like a train locomotive. It just wasn't working right. I've been talking to Joe Borgerding from Boiler Commander and he's been advising me on some things and, and I'm gonna show you something in a minute here. But he said, man, I, I just, I can't believe that you're not seeing instant improvement from the fans and the grate. And I said, I don't know, I'm about ready to throw a stick of dynamite at this thing and be done. I think it just needs to be cleaned out. I think it's really plugged up. So I pulled my chimney cap and my extension off, went in through the top, I could feel a bunch of junk in there. <laughs> and I said, I just, I, I gotta make some tools. I can't get into this top drawer the way I want it. And he said, even if you pull the center baffle out, I was like, uh, I didn't know you could do that. Seven years I've had this boiler. I didn't know that you could pull that center baffle out. So I did that. I had to use a tractor to pull it out because it's pretty well stuck in there. And that allowed me to get the tool that comes with the boiler all the way in there. Everything makes a lot more sense now. It's, I want to say it's embarrassing that I didn't do that to begin with. However, when I bought this boiler, the guy I bought it from was like, there you go. Good luck. You're going to spend that kind of money. Uh, <laughs> It would be nice if someone said, why don't you give it all hooked up and I'll come by and take a look at it with you. Run over some points on how to clean it, maintenance, things like that. But I digress. So that brings me to this, the Boiler Commander. I found this on Facebook in one of the boiler groups, a boiler hacks, homemade this and that. And I was super intrigued. There was a guy on there saying that he had tripled his burn time, cut his uh, wood consumption in half, and, and I mean cut his smoke down to like 10% of what he had in there before. And quite frankly, I thought it was a bunch of crap. I was like, no way. No way there's anything you could add to these boilers to make them that much more efficient. So I kind of did a little research, got into it, and I called Joe, who is the creator of the Boiler Commander, inventor, whatever you want. And I started talking. It just says right here in his flyer, decrease wood consumption, control the burn cycle, minimize spot boiling, reduce metal fatigue, limit smoke, reduce electricity usage, and extend blower motor life sign me up. So we started talking a little and I said, why, why if this is such a great thing, do these boilers not come with it? And kind of what he explained to me is he said, when they invent these boilers, they get the EPA testing done on them. It costs tons and tons of money, million dollars to get it done. Certify it with the EPA, call it a coal burner and they put it out. To go back and change it or add anything to it is really expensive. And so they've put their, their money, if you will, into coming out with gasifiers and things like that. Seems to me that they're a little overcomplicated, but I've never used one, so I'm, you know, talking out of school. But something like this uh, would be very expensive for them to add it on. For him to do it, he doesn't have to go through the EPA testing or anything. He, he is the aftermarket for the wood boilers. So my boiler in particular with the C500 with the heat master because it's a coal burner required new fans and it required a grate with the snorkel to make it burn. And that alone, like seriously, has increased uh, my burn times by, I don't know, I would say it's over double. It used to be when I would go out and fill that thing full and I would burn overnight. I would come out maybe, let's say eight o'clock at night and I would come out at seven o'clock in the morning and that thing would just be screaming for wood. Last night, it was in the teens overnight I filled that boiler up at about 8.30 last night. I didn't come out till after eight o'clock this morning 
And when I looked inside that thing, 60% of the wood I put in last night was still there. It's, it's like three times the burn time in there. It's pretty incredible. And that's just one with cleaning it out. I, I, I gotta think that made a huge difference to how it works. But according to Joe as well, that new grate, the way it properly feeds air into the fire and gives you that secondary burn. And with the new higher CFM fans, that's made a big difference. Now, he says with the boiler commander, we are going to see that kind of improvement again, which is crazy. I think we go from eight to 10 hour burn times to like 48 hours. And, and from what I'm understanding uh, from the experiences other people have had with this product, that is truly possible. Okay, so here's kind of the basics of how the Boiler Commander works. We've got a couple cords on the back here and Joe supplies them uh, with some different cord ends depending on what model you have because it'd be really hard to make a set of directions for a product like this that works with so many different kinds of boilers because every one of them is a little bit different. He knows a lot and helped me out a lot. I've called him more times than anyone should call tech support but I want to get this right. So basically we've got you know and there's there's a diagram in here in the directions it talks about you're going to have this here is going to be your power in from your power supply that powers the boiler right now. now this is the 120 volt uh, variable which means this is what's going to go into the fans and in, in between between these is all this mess that controls it. This here is going to go to your solenoid that opens and shuts the fan door. There's some controls in there and this probe goes into your chimney and it's going to measure the temperature of the smoke coming out your chimney, decide if it needs to run the fans more or less depending on what kind of readout it's getting. This is kind of an interesting little device that he suggested I get for it. London's gonna join me for the rest of the video. Can you say hi? So this little unit here is called an ink bird and this talks to your phone. It's gonna take the place of the Aquastat of the, the Ranco computer on the boiler now. So we're gonna pull the probe out of the water jacket that's in there now and replace it with this one. This orange cord <laughs> for the signal wire is gonna plug into the heat side. We don't worry about the cool side because the boiler doesn't cool. We're gonna put a female cord end on the line going to the solenoid and this is gonna plug into that. What this is going to do is everything that the Ranco computer does now but it is going to collect data and send it to my phone. It's gonna, it's gonna show me a graph. So things like, I want my boiler to recover, right? When the temperature drops below the bottom limit uh, that you set it to, and in my case, it'll be about 170 degrees. You want it to get back up to 185 and go off within 15 minutes. If it doesn't, we can adjust uh, the temp for the, the stack here. You know, maybe we need to clean it and do whatever, but it's gonna give you that information that you need to see to make sure your boiler is running as efficient as possible. So enough of me jabbing my jaw. Let's go ahead and get this thing mounted to the side of the boiler. We're gonna plug everything in and then we'll take a look at what it does. Obviously, I won't be able to give you too many results today when we're done, but we'll at least get it hooked up. I'll tell you how painful it is. I think it will not be at all. I've kind of been making this harder in my head than it needs to be. And then we'll have to let it sit, collect some data, and see how it goes. Let's go outside. You want to help me? Yeah. Yeah, I like your glasses. So I'm going in here into this box. This is the main power box for the unit to eliminate this power feed. This is what fed the fans before. We are going to plug uh, one of the green cords in here to feed the boiler commander and then it will pass through there and feed the fans down here. This switch kills these outlets and it kills this power feed coming out. But just because you turned that off, this one coming in from your breaker box is still live. Don't decide because you flip the switch off. You could take this out, put your fingers in it because uh, you, you should not. Okay, <laughs> I did it. Might be a little loud over these fans, but I'm gonna flip the camera around and from the other side, I'm gonna explain to you guys what we did. So I mounted the boiler commander to my back door here and you'll have to decide what works the best for you. It can go in a lot of different places. I think a lot of people probably mount it to the side here. Uh, which I could have done and drilled a hole and ran my cords uh, right through the side But I put it on the door here. I actually ran my cords down and went under the boiler And if you look down here in the floor You could see where the cords just squeak past that corrugated pipe So when they come through from the boiler commander, this is the power cord So this is the power for my boiler this switch runs the pumps on and off So I plugged it in there. I actually took this orange cord here and I plug my pumps into a splitter. That way we're powering it 
off of that. So I was able to power the boiler commander from the other available outlet. So I took the other cord end coming out of the boiler commander with the female end and I just cut the end off and I wired it into both of my fans. I took actually a piece of the cord and made this bridge between the two of them, jumper if you want to say. This is just simple black to black, white to white, wire nut it all together. Make sure you get your ground wires so your motors are ground out. And now we have power from the boiler outlet through the boiler commander and down to run both of the fans. Simple enough. On my boiler, it's solenoid controlled. That's what controls the damper uh, and opens and closes to let the fans blow into the boiler itself. So these used to power through the fans, but now we run them up here. We have the orange uh, signal wire coming from the boiler commander. We have the wire going down to the solenoid. And then this wire here comes from the ink bird. And I mounted this little junction box on here and just wired them all together. I'll put a cover on that. I just zip tied it to the line here. I keep wanting to run like uh, <laughs> sheet metal screws and, and screw the box to the boiler, but you'll have a bad day if you do that. So from here, we go up and we plug into the heat side of the ink bird. And now we just go up to the ink bird unit, easy peasy. It would be making a good point to say that this is a project you kind of want to do on a warm day. Like today, it was like 48 degrees. That way I can turn the boiler off. It was off for about five hours. You don't worry about it freezing. It's very comfortable to work. It's not too big a deal. It'll get cold again here, but my water temp dropped. Not, not too bad, but several degrees uh, while I was working and also your hands aren't freezing cold. Although the back of the boiler is pretty warm in there, so that works good. The only thing I had a hard time with was pulling my temperature probe off from behind this uh, Ranco computer. Uh, that was hot to pull it out. So I wound up doing it with a pair of pliers. So from the ink bird, there's a temperature probe wire. That's what this is here. So I just slipped it down the insulation. I ran it along here. I had this computer out and that's where I could access my plug. It's gonna be in a different place for a lot of different boilers, but mine is behind the Ranco there. So because we took this wire, which comes from that Ranco, these three wires, put a cord in on them and plugged them into the ink bird there, that's gonna keep my high limit switch working from the boiler on the front. And because the whole thing is still wired to power, it'll let the light work in the front as well because there's a light switch on that computer. So I also, out of the bottom of the boiler commander, there's a probe that goes up here into the chimney. And that's gonna read your stack temp. You can see here on the boiler commander itself, my stack temp just went 338 right there. It's set at 750. So I just fired it back up. Once this reaches 750, it'll shut off. Joe was saying I could probably run that around 650. If you're firing on all cylinders and you're burning good dry, like oak, hardwood, stuff like that, probably not as important for it to be at 750 where it would burn off more of particulate because there'll be less of it in there and that'll lead to better wood consumption. So with the boiler commander set and the stack temp set to 750, I'm gonna leave it there for now. We come to the ink bird here and this is your actual temp and your set temp. So you, you set it with, uh, just like you do the Ranco computer on the other side, I set mine at 185. It is at 185, that's why the fans aren't working. So here's something that's kind of cool. This big red button is a coal bed protector. My understanding of it is that it works kind of like a timer. So if your boiler drops down below temp, and it's firing up after a certain amount of time and not getting the heat, the temp is not going up, it will shut the fans down and let your coal bed sit there and smolder. Otherwise, your fans will just keep blowing and blowing and blowing and they'll blow the whole coal bed out and you'll have to start over again, scoop it out, relight it, all the things. Big pain in the butt. So if you come out and this red light is on, that's what's happened. So you can get your fire going, you can hit the reset, it'll turn the timer off and everything's good. I think that's kind of cool. It's kind of a second line of defense to make sure you don't have to keep relighting your boiler. I I really have that problem having to relight my boiler, but I know a lot of people do, and that would be a big help to make sure that doesn't happen. So I should say that the ink bird is not required to run the boiler commander, but here's why it's nice. I could have left this signal wire where it was over here. It would have run off the Ramco computer, and Joe, you could correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but the boiler commander would still work without it. The nice thing about the ink bird, and he included it in the kit. You know, I paid a little extra for it, but it comes with it. You can download their app. Right now it's saying I'm at 186 degrees. You go on here, you register, agree to the terms and conditions, whatever, download the app, 
you hit the plus, you look for this device. This is a ITC 308 Wi-Fi, whatever it is. I select that, you pair it, whatever, off your Wi-Fi, and it just worked pretty easily. Heat difference, cooling difference, high temp. There's some things in here that you don't really need because this will run cooling devices and all kinds of different things. So I set my heating difference at 20 degrees. I set my high temp at uh, 195 that'll let me know when it goes off i set my low temp at 140. the thing i'm looking most forward to this is if i get up in the morning and it's still dark and blizzarding i could pull this up on my phone and i can tell what temp the boiler is if it's calling for heat or not that's pretty awesome and because it has that alarm i'm assuming i don't know but it will uh, give you an alarm if it drops down below temp and you can come out and take care of it it's pretty awesome all right so i've been messing around with this thing for i don't know four or five hours. I suppose if I wasn't making videos and knew what I was doing, it wouldn't be so bad. Joe was just a, a wealth of knowledge and more than willing to help. I'm already, just with the improvements that we made last week, uh, probably cut my wood consumption in half and, and I think I could do it again here. So we'll keep an eye on this thing and uh, I'll let you guys know how it goes. But I'll put a link in the description below with Joe's contact information for Boiler Commander. He's got a website. You can find him on Facebook. He's all over the place. But order one today. These, at the time I bought this, I want to say it was running about a thousand bucks. You got shipping. The Inkbird was a little more. And with my model, I wound up buying two new fans and making that great but I think with most of the other models like a central boiler you probably wouldn't have to don't quote me on that you'll have to talk to him but Joe can tell you everything you need where to get it he was sending me links for fans on Amazon and pictures and all kinds of stuff very very helpful so thanks for watching guys I know this video is going to get very long I'm going to throw some wood in this boiler and before the sun goes down over the horizon there I'm going to try and get these panels screwed back on the side and see if I can get this thing closed up we're checking this one is done in the books Let's move on to the next thing. Thanks for watching.